Hornby's new Black 5 is finally here. Let's put her through her paces and see how she does. Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to Proper Chuffed. My name's Hilton and I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But that's half the fun of this, isn't it? If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you enjoy this content. And if you do, please consider subscribing. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back guys. It's good to see you again. Hornby's new tooling of the famous Black 5 is here and it arrived on my doorstep today from Kono Model Railway Center. Thank you very much to them. They're so rapid with their deliveries and turnover times and just support overall, especially getting a locomotive from over there all the way to here in South Africa. So thank you guys for that. Uh, but without further ado, let's unbox this new tooling, see what it's all about, get some running in and get some impressions. So here it is, the brand new Black 5 from Hornby, obviously in this brand new packaging that Hornby are using. Absolutely love this stuff. It's super rigid and I knew it would be super safe getting down to South Africa all the way from the UK. So let's unbox it and take a look. First impressions really. So what's in the box? Our absolutely stunning Black 5 in this fantastically cushioned packaging from Hornby. Really, really like this stuff. Um, it's so rigid. Um, before we go into the locomotive and detail packs, let's just take a look through the manual quickly. This is the DCC ready version. As far as I can see, there's no DCC fitted or sound fitted version yet available, but I believe that's coming. Um, some stuff from the signal box and all of Hornby's connect stuff. Um, some info here regarding DCC fitting, which will be done in the tender. I've actually bricked up HM7000 just for this locomotive so we could fit it with sound. It does come with a snow plow, which I think is really cool. And uh, we'll be fitting a couple of these detail parts to it probably in the future. For now, we're just gonna get into some running. Um, but yeah, pretty stock standard stuff from Hornby there in terms of packaging. Let's get into the loco. So looking at the detail pack, unfortunately, Probably can't see it. Fortunately, it's a resealable bag. Um, just popping this out here. Quite a lot of little things going on here. Uh, we've got two snow plows, which is fantastic. Uh, Loco crew. Um, there's the brakes. Another additional NEM coupler. Uh, screw links. And um, some steps. And to be honest with you, can't really tell you what the rest of them are. Um, but all cool little additional pieces that we can add. Oh, one thing I did see here is the additional lamps that have been included with the locomotive, which is fantastic. Three, no, two little lamps, plus an extra screw in case you lose the one when you're opening it all up with uh, DCC fitting. So let me just pop that back in the bag. Oh man, this is beautiful right off the bat. No seam lines, beautiful brass up here, turned brass. I love this effect of the sort of smoke weathered um, smoke box. Uh, I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'm actually looking at it from a slightly different angle that you guys are. Um, but absolutely stunning. The level of detail here is beautiful. I am absolutely blown away. But I think in the interest of time and the fact that you probably want to see this closer up. Let's turn on the lights, put her on the turntable, get a bit of history, and then take a closer look at Hornby's new Black 5. The LMS Black 5, officially known as the London, Midland and Scottish Railway Class 5 460, is one of Britain's most iconic steam locomotives. Developed in the 1930s by Sir William Stanier, Chief Mechanical Engineer of the LMS, the Black 5 was designed to handle a variety of tasks from express passenger to freight duties across the diverse terrain of the British railway network. Introduced in 1934, the Black 5 quickly became renowned for its versatility, reliability and performance. Its design incorporated several innovative features, including a larger boiler with a bell pair firebox for increased steam generation and improved combustion efficiency. The locomotive's 460 wheel arrangement provided a balance between power and flexibility, allowing it to negotiate both tight curves and long stretches of track with ease. Initially, the Black 5s were primarily used for mixed traffic duties, hauling both passenger and freight trains. However, they soon proved themselves capable of handling express passenger services, particularly on secondary routes where the versatility was highly valued. 
With their distinctive black livery and clean lines, the Black Fives became a familiar sight on railways throughout Britain. During World War II, the Black Fives played a crucial role in the transportation of goods and personnel, supporting the war effort by ensuring the smooth operation of the railway network, despite the challenge of increased demand and limited resources. After the war, they continued to serve admirably, adapting to the changing needs of the railway industry. Despite the onset of diesel and electric traction in the post-war years, the Black Fives remained in service, gradually being phased out as steam gave way to more modern forms of motive power. However, many were preserved thanks to the efforts of railway enthusiasts and heritage organizations, ensuring their legacy lives on to this day. Today, the Black Fives continue to capture the imagination of railway enthusiasts and historians alike, with several examples preserved in operational condition on heritage railways across the UK. Their timeless design, coupled with their remarkable performance and reliability, cements their status as one of the most beloved steam locomotives in British Railways history. So here we are, face to face with Hornby's LMS Black 5 in 00, featuring an all new tooling. This is rather exciting stuff. So right off the bat, we're met with a very impressive amount of detail. Close attention has been paid to all the finer points here that we're probably not used to seeing on some of Hornby's models. And I think that's worth noting is just how many separately fitted parts we have on here. Handrails, brass and copper pipework, smoke box dart, the lamp irons, and so much more adorn this brilliant little model. There is no seam line visible from the top of the boiler and the turn brass safety valves really stand out here. The whistle, while plastic, is painted well enough that it doesn't look out of place here. The insane rivet detail is really fantastic too. The sizing of each of the rivets looks really quite accurate from my experience. The front of the loco really does shine, pun intended, <laughs> with its two lamps that do indeed light up under operation. I'll show you that in a bit though. But the lettering and numbering, quite visible on the front, is really quite well done, uh, with an insanely yet small and completely legible builder's plate to boot. The running board looks as straight as an arrow from where I'm standing, though it's never bugged me too much. The die-cast chassis is clearly doing its job here. While the main body is made out of plastic, perhaps a missed opportunity on Hornby's part, the paint finish really is stellar and frankly I probably wouldn't see the difference, especially once weathered. Stepping into the cab of the Black 5 is like taking a journey back in time. The cab interior is a masterpiece of detailing, featuring accurately replicated controls, gauges and levers. Whether it's the throttle, brake handle or firebox door, each component is faithfully reproduced to reflect the intricacies of the original locomotive. And of particular note is that the cab roof has been painted in this lovely cream color. The locomotive does include a glowing firebox, and it's great to see Hornby making this commonplace in their newer steam locomotives. It does feel like no detail has been overlooked in replicating the iconic black livery and markings of the LMS Black 5. From the bold lettering on the tender to the intricate lining on the locomotive body, every aspect of the exterior finish is very well executed. Of particular note, it seems Hornby have finally started paying more attention to the smoke boxes of steam engines, giving them that sooty matte finish that really makes them look far more authentic straight out of the box. Hornby are masters of valve gear in my experience and in steam locomotives in general, and the level of in intricacy here is a testament to the manufacturer. Beyond the main locomotive, I am so happy to say this model includes Hornby's new clip coupling. It seems we are slowly moving away from that wire plug system and this makes handling the engine so much easier with the snappy and effective connection system. The tender fares almost as well as the engine with a great amount of detail including small notices on the engine side as well as a lit lamp on the rear of the tender. This engine comes with two snow plows, both of which are easily fitted using two small holes under the buffer beam and while appearing fairly low here, can be slightly raised and may struggle on rougher inclines, I suspect. Complete with a 21 pin DCC socket, you can fit HM7000 to this. Stick around to the end of the video if you'd like to see how I did it. Before we get to running, I thought we'd just check out the Black 5's weighs. And as you can see here, the Black 5 weighs in at 361 grams on my scale. Interesting though, because on the Hornby website, it says it weighs 0 0.63. So I'm guessing that meant 630 grams, which doesn't seem likely. I'm a little bit confused about that, but 361 grams is pretty good. So here we are then, the Black 5 on track. And as you can see, it's got two distinct sort of lighting features. Obviously you've got the front lamps, as well as the rear lamps, and of course the firebox glow. 
So let's put it under power then. And as you can see, the Black 5 has a very, very smooth gearing off the line. Now, I've not actually run this one in, given that it's brand new and I've just slapped it on the track, but this is rather impressive. A decent forward crawl and an even slower backwards crawl. This is quite interesting. I've not seen this before, but it certainly is moving a lot slower backwards than it does forwards. Regardless, I think this is a very decent little shunting speed, so you can be quite happy with that. So I'm gonna run her in now and then we'll perform some more tests. And we're back and heading up the whiskey distillery line, or as my friend Double O Dave calls it, the hill of despair. Um, this is a fairly steep gradient um, at the highest point, which is about three to four percent actually. And as you can see here, rather impressively, the Black 5 makes easy work of this rather steep gradient, which is really impressive to see. This line is not designed by any means for a locomotive of this size, but I always like to see just how well a locomotive pulls itself up this hill. So let's head back down. As you can see, crossing points is no issue whatsoever for the Black 5. It seems that the gauging is really well done here. I don't actually have a gauge measurement tool yet, but I do plan on investing in one soon. But as you can see, at uh, slow and rather quick speeds, the Black 5 makes easy work of this point. The Black 5 also makes quick work of both the third and second radius. Really impressed with this Black 5 so far. So let's hook her up to some freight, which I think is a bit more historically accurate for a locomotive like this, and get her running around Dunroman. This is Hornby at their finest, in my humble opinion, and I know that that opinion doesn't stand for all that much given that I've been doing this for about seven or eight months now. However, based on what I've seen in comparison to sort of previous stuff from Hornby, I really do think they're pulling out all the stops lately. They've obviously got this new P2 with the steam generator, which I admittedly did debate getting, but decided that I'll wait for the Earl Marischal to come out later with the extra smoke deflectors. I thought that looked quite cool and unique. Besides the point, I do think this is Hornby doing right by their consumers. 229 pounds from Hornby or 219 from other retailers is pretty good value for what you're getting here. It's a very finely tooled machine, as you can see, and I think they've done a really great job with delivery too. If you've been on the fence about a Black 5 for a while now and you're considering it, I think this might be the one. Now there are various iterations coming a little bit later this year, so you can keep an eye out for those too as they are also part of the new tooling. But overall, I'm really impressed and I do think it's well worth the £219 that I paid for it. If you're an LMS fan or just a Black 5 fan, it's a bit of a no-brainer to me. I'd say pick this one up, it's well worth it. 
uh, I'll continue testing it and I will report back on it in the future just to see if it's, you know, encountered any hiccups or anything. If you'd like to see the DCC fitting, stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how I installed the decoder as well as the speaker. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's certainly my first brand new sort of locomotive that's recently been released. And a big thanks again to Kono who made this possible, just sending it over so damn quickly. <laughs> I really do appreciate that. Until I see you next time, keep your engines fired and stay on track. All the best. So the Black 5 is actually very easy to install DCC into. There are two screws underneath the tender, um, just below the connection point. And you need to just unscrew that. And mine actually just sort of popped out immediately. And I was met with this. So obviously we've got the connection point here to the rear lights and our um, blanking plate, which I've removed now. And it's just time to install HM7000. So just a note, and I think it's really cool that Hornby have done this. When you do decide to, or if you decide to fit HM7000, they've already made provision for your speaker. So you don't actually have to add Hornby's sort of whole um, built together little sugar cube system. Essentially what they have inside the tender is there's a little plate where you can just place your plonky little speaker into there and it should be good to go. And once that's in, you're sorted. Now, I think this, <laughs> this is uh, kind of interesting because if you do place it in there and you glue it in there or use the tape and it sticks it in there, it really does mean that that HM7000 um, speaker is locked to that locomotive. Obviously you can switch decoders if you want to, but the, the speaker itself is there permanently once you've installed it. But I do think it's quite cool that they've included that so that you don't have to sort of wangle with the different shapes and sizes of the, the sugar cube uh, housings just to get it in. So I'm gonna just quickly do that now. So word of warning, I guess, before you decide to slap the decoder on and then put the cube speaker into it, you do need to make sure that the cube speaker goes in first because the blanking plate will essentially sit on top of that. Um, and it's gonna be a little annoying to keep pulling this off and on. Uh, so rather just to make life easier, make sure you install the, the cube speaker first and then put the, blank, uh, the decoder itself on and plug it all in together. Applying a bit of pressure there once I've taken off the, the little sticky sleeve, making sure that that's now down and mounted quite nicely. I'm going to plug in my decoder. And we'll plug in the speaker. So with that, we're sorted. And that's how you install the HM7000 into your new Hornby Black 5. Hope that helps you guys.